Hi everybody, welcome to Brickfall. My name's Jack. Today is a LEGO collection episode. We've got all of the astromech droids ever made. This is a pretty popularly requested episode and uh, happy to say that we finally got it all together. The jobs of these droids in the Star Wars series was being a repair droid for ships. They are also pretty darn good co-pilots, I hear. And from what I remember, I'm pretty sure they can plot courses to other systems. I've already done a collection video on the most beloved of the astromech droids, R2-D2, so if you want to learn more about that guy, I will leave a link in the video description below. This is going to focus on all of the other ones, of which there are a lot. So let's go through this collection chronologically from when they were released. I will also let you know the prices. Some of these guys are actually pretty rare. So jumping right in the first astromech droid came out in 1999 it is r5d4 he came out in the set tie fighter and x-wing 7150 you can see that the detailing on the head here is up top that was pretty common for a lot of these first guys but it changed up pretty quickly he's around two bucks and we didn't get any new different astromech droids until 2005 interestingly enough this next droid is also r5d4 but you can see he has no printing on the head and that extra little piece that makes him look a little bit taller i'm pretty sure this is the droid that has that malfunction at the sand crawler this did come from the set sand crawler 10144 lego later makes a piece that just looks more like how this droid's head is supposed to look but anyways he's about six bucks nothing different about the body let's move on to 2006 this is our first evil or bad guy astromech droid they make all of the bad guy or imperial astromech droids in black just so you don't get confused this is r2q5 he came out in the imperial star destroyer set 6211 and he goes for around six dollars Lego say is pretty consistent, releasing one new astromech droid a year for a while, so this next guy in 2007, R2R7, is pretty much the exact same detailing as our original astromech droid, except for all of the red highlights are now green. It came out in the set Republic Cruiser 7665. He's about seven bucks, but when we jump up to 2008, the updated version of R2Q5, the bad guy astromech droid, is the first guy that has a better version of printing on the head, not including R2D2. Here he is next to his original counterpart. You can see the detailing on the body is pretty much exactly the same. Maybe the copper highlights for the new guy are a little bit more red, but yeah, definitely the printing for the head is a lot better. He was released in the Death Star set 10188, as well as the advent calendar for this year, 7958. This makes him common and pretty cheap. He's four bucks. Moving on to 2009, here is R7A7. This is from Ahsoka's Starfighter and Vulture Droid, set number 7751. Not really a big fan of this color combo, but you can can see the detailing has changed this is to match up with the clone wars detailing because he is from the clone wars show and this droid a little bit surprising to me goes for around 11 dollars 2010 has three new astromech droids and this first guy has a color combination that i can get behind he kind of reminds me of s'mores this is r7 d4 from the set plo Koon's starfighter 8093 it's got the same detailing from the Clone Wars like the last droid, but he does not come with the same price. He's uh, about $2. This next one, R4P44, is from ARC-170 Starfighter, set number 8088. Jeez, I am saying a lot of numbers really fast, but he is around 6 bucks. and I guess the only thing that makes him unique are his dark green highlights. And this last guy from 2010 is sort of an unofficial update of R5D4 from 1999. You can see he still has the sort of top head printing, not the full head printing, but that part of the printing is updated. He actually has no name. This guy was just labeled Astromech Droid in the set. And the set was Y-Wing Fighter 7658, and this guy goes for around $4. In 2011, there were two droids released. This first guy we're looking at right now is pretty unique. He's the only droid with gold printing that was ever made. He definitely stands out quite a bit when you look at the collection, and this is Mace Windu's Astromech. He's R8B7 from Mace Windu's Jedi Starfighter, set number 7868. He's one of the more expensive Astromech droids, coming out to around 12 bucks. And this next guy is also very unique as well. He's the only droid that was made in pearl gray. You can see the body is slightly reflective and his name is R2Q2. And I said earlier that all the bad guy astromech droids were printed in black. This is the only exception to the rule. He came out in the Imperial V-Wing Fighter 7915 and retails for about four bucks. The next year is one of the biggest years for astromech releases. There were five new droids. This is the most unique looking one of them for sure. He's one of only two droids that doesn't use the standard astromech body like the rest. He is T701 from the set Republic Strike 
Striker Starfighter 9497. He's got several unique prints on here, and what I like is that he's a built bot, so all of these pieces can technically be taken off and used for other things. I'd say he's about $7 on Bricklink, and this next guy is R3D5, a very colorful bright green bot from Sacy Tins Jedi Starfighter 9498. I like this detailing. It's a bit simplified like the uh, Clone Wars detailing, but there's just a few more extra added highlights on the front of the body, which look pretty good. He is six bucks, and we finally get a new head for the Astromech droid. And not only that, the detailing on the front of the body here is definitely a lot more intricate from now on. This is R5D8 from the X-Wing Starfighter set 9493, but he also did come out in that Sandcrawler set 75059, and he goes for around five bucks. Here is pretty much the same droid, except he is now mustard instead of ketchup. He is R5F7. He came out in Gold Leader's Y-Wing Starfighter 9495, as well as the advent calendar for this year, and he's also five bucks. And I guess LEGO decided the Empire also needed a droid with this new head, so here is R5J2 from TIE Fighter set 9492. He is six bucks, but you can see he also has pretty much the exact same color combo as the previous black Imperial droids. Moving up, 2013 brings us two new droids. Both of them are different kinds of R4s. This first one has the same new headpiece. It's gray now. This is R4G0. This guy came out in Jack 14's Stealth Starfighter 75018. He goes for around $4. And it is about time, but we finally get a minifigure for R4P17. This is Obi-Wan's droid. It's amazing to me that this minifig didn't come out until 2013. He is Obi-Wan's droid after all. But technically, this isn't the first first bit of Lego that represents this guy. Remember Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter for the Ultimate Collector series came out in 2010, and there we got a much larger headpiece. Anyways, this first R4 is about six bucks, and moving on to the next year, 2014 brings us five new figs. This guy was exclusive to the Sandcrawler set 75059. He's just known as R2 unit, and because he's exclusive to this set, his price comes out to $15. Nothing really too fancy with his looks, it's just his rarity that brings him up. And this next guy is kind of the opposite situation. R2X2, or R2X tree, came from the Star Wars Advent Calendar set 75056, and he is extremely unique, probably one of the strangest looking astromech droids out there. Yet he's really not that uncommon, and he's only around five bucks. Our next guy here is also pretty different. This is C110P, or Chopper, and this is Ezra Bridger's droid. He came from the Phantom set 75048. He's eight bucks, and these next two droids actually don't have any name. They're both just simply known as Astromech Droid. Here is the dark blue one. This guy came out in Jedi Scout Fighter 75051. He's exclusive to this set, and he's kind of expensive. He's 13 bucks, and there's no other blue-bodied Astromech Droid out there, so he is kind of unique. I kind of like that. And this Astromech Droid, once again, just called Astromech Droid in the set, came out in two sets. He was in V-Wing Starfighter 75039 and Anakin's Custom Jedi Starfighter 75087. And he is nearly identical to Obi-Wan's R4. The only difference really is that the red used is a much brighter one here. This guy goes for around $6 on Bricklink, and let's jump up to 2015. Two droids came out this year, both of which are some of my favorites. This is our last Imperial Astromech Droid, and that is actually just this droid his name in the set. He came out in the Imperial Assault Carrier 75106, and this is the first time we've seen a transparent head used for this kind of droid. It looks good with the fine red detailing kind of going all around. Sort of gives the effect that it could be some sort of red glowing light, but I think what really makes it is actually the detailing on the body is really kind of unique in and of itself. Up until this point, the detailing really hasn't changed that much droid from droid. All they really do is choose to highlight different parts with different colors, but generally keeping the exact same design. This droid is unique in that the design for the main front of the body is actually a different design that only really belongs to him. Aside from a few unique characters in Clone Wars and Rebels, this is really the only main bodied astromech droid with its own unique detailing. All right, and here is the next guy. Now, I hope you didn't forget that, yes, BB-8 is indeed an astromech droid. He was released in Poe's X-Wing Fighter 75102 and the Millennium Falcon set 75105. He goes for about five bucks on Bricklink. The detailings for this guy are great all around. I don't know if they're gonna need to change any of the printing up for this droid throughout the movies. The only way that would happen is if something happened to him, like he got damaged or dirty in a scene and there was a set that came from that. Other than that, I think BB-8's gonna be pretty much looking the same from here on out. 
out. Okay, coming up on the most recent year, 2016, there are two droids. This is the new R4, Obi-Wan's R4. And he is nearly identical to the original. Let me just show them next to each other. And if you can see it, the only real difference is that band that goes around the bottom of his head. He's going for around eight bucks on Bricklink, which makes him a little bit more than the original. But here is our final droid. And believe it or not, he's actually the most expensive of the collection. And that is because he came out in, well, one of the most universally disliked Star Wars sets ever to be made, but that set was very, very expensive. This was the Assault on Hot set, of course, 75098, and just about all minifigures in the set were exclusive prints, and admittedly, some of those prints felt like they were just minor tweaks to existing ones, just kind of for the sake of having an exclusive minifigure in the set, but in the case of R3A2, I actually think they did a decent job. It's the first one of these astromech droids with orange highlights, and he has a tinted transparent head, also the first droid to have that. The top of the head kind of reminds me of a nuclear symbol somewhat. And yeah, it's a pretty good droid all around. He actually retails right now for $20. And with that, we just completed the collection. There are 27 astromech droids that I just went through. And when we include R2, that's another 10. So this whole collection equals 37 droids. There's a lot of diversity in this collection, at least in color. There really wasn't that many redesigns with the actual prints. And this kind of makes sense. There isn't really a whole lot more they could do for that front printing. But what doesn't make sense is that they haven't added any printing on the back. There's not as much detail going on the back of these astromech droids, but it would be kind of nice to have it there. The next droid I would like to see appear in this collection would be R2KT. She's made several appearances in the Clone Wars TV show as well as the Star Wars Force Awakens movie. But more than that, there's quite a story on how this droid actually came to be. And when LEGO does a Resistance base set, that would be kind of a perfect opportunity to put her in. All right, that is it for this collection review. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like this video or subscribe. And uh, if you have any ideas about another kind of collection you want to see in the future, you can let us know in the comment section below. All right, once again, thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next time at Brickfall. Yeah!